one of the reasons why, there's nothing more painful, by the way, than seeing our young brothers and sisters deviate from, from Islam, and by deviation, I'm, I'm sure most of you know what I mean, by not adopting uh, Islamic teachings within our own lives. And I don't specifically mean in relation to ibadat and, and prayer and, and salah and giving of zakah. And, and, you know, Islam as in our way of life, we deviated from that path. We, don't, we haven't adopted Islam as our way of life. And it's sad to see that. It really is. Um, you, and with that, you see Muslims losing their identity. You know, we're, we're losing our, our values uh, and, and, well, in, and in some cases, even our deed. I've come across many individuals. Um, I came across a, uh, a brother who said to me, and this brother is of a Pakistani background, a Mirpuri background. Are there any Mirpuris here? One, mashallah. A Mirpuri background. And uh, he, uh, naturally, he had, uh, 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 there was a huge emphasis on, on Islam throughout his life. And um, a lot of it was kind of um, by his parents, he, he felt as though it was forced upon him, as though he was forced to pray by his parents. He was forced to go to the masjid after school uh, for two hours every single day. He was forced to go to, to the masjid uh, during, on the weekends. And uh, he, was in, he, he just graduated um, last year, and I, I met him a couple of, uh, of months ago, uh, before Ramadan in fact. And I, and I said to him, you know, Ramadan Kareem, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, the coming of the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions used to be eager for the coming of the month of Ramadan. They used to be very happy. The Prophet alayhi wa sallam, prior to the coming of the month of Ramadan, he would talk to the Sahaba al-Kiram and he would dedicate his Friday khutbahs to informing the companions of, of the sanctity of this month so that they adhere to, to Islamic teachings in regards to it. And I said, Ramadan Kareem, and he said, Ramadan? Sidi, I don't fast. Brother, I don't fast. And I said, okay, that's, that's uh, I'm sure it's not the end of the world, the brother doesn't fast. And he said, well, uh, I said, why, why don't you fast? And he says, uh, well, I, well, I don't know, you know, Islam is just, it's just one of those things. So one of those things. Islam is not one of those things. Islam is the thing for us. And he said, I don't believe, to be perfectly honest with you, that I don't believe whether there's a God or not. And that shook me to the core. And I was thinking to myself, that here we are, we're bickering inside our masajids, yeah? where, uh, where some of us are celebrating Eid on, on Tuesday, the others are celebrating it on Wednesday. Uh, you know, where we refuse to acknowledge each other where we are cursing and abusing one another within our masajids. The house of Allah Azza wa Jal, we're abusing and cursing one another. And we're worried about the trivial matters. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he warned us against getting involved in those small trivial matters which will cloud our minds. And you know, we, we, we don't look at the wider context. Shaykh Abdul Hakim Murad, uh, my teacher in, in, in Cambridge, he used to always remind us of the manat. He said the manat is very important, and the manat is a context, and that context means if you the place in which you live. Look at the context. Everything that you do, it has a context. It has a manat, and he would always remind us of that. And um, you know, look at those things that we're worried about, those trivial matters, and our brothers and sisters in universities and our brothers and sisters in the wider British Muslim community in the UK are losing their faith, and we're worried about. Um, you know, I'm going to celebrate Eid on Tuesday. The other said, no, I'm going to celebrate on Wednesday just because I don't want to follow you. You know, it's, we're, we're involving ourselves in, in trivial pursuit when we should be coming to, together as, as one ummah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always stressed upon the ummah or the unity of that ummah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, my ummah is like one body, one jasad, one body. If one part of that body is in pain, then the entire body feels that pain. And, you know, that's how we need to feel. And if there's a single Muslim brother or sister of ours who is suffering, um, we, need, we should be feeling that pain for that individual. Because you know why? The Prophet wasallam felt pain for those individuals. The Prophet wasallam felt pain for those individuals who were non-Muslims also. The Prophet wasallam in, in, in Quraysh, um, you know, uh, bef before uh, the, the number of Muslims reached, a certain amount where they, afterwards, where they done tabligh and ta'wah and invited people towards Islam. 
whenever he came across any individual who was suffering, he wouldn't question them first. Are you a Muslim? He wouldn't say, are you a Muslim first? If you're a Muslim, then I'll help you. If you're a Muslim, then I'll assist you in any way I can. If you're a non-Muslim, then, you know, then no. You go to your idols in the Kaaba 360 of them and ask them for help. No, the Prophet ﷺ was that all-encompassing individual, the character of the Prophet. That's why the Prophet ﷺ is, is recognizing Al-Qudwat al hasan The Prophet ﷺ had the perfect example, a perfect example, a role model for us to follow. Um, 